Hey guys, welcome back to Painted Creek Farm. My name is Amber. Today I am going to transfer um, my rabbit kits over to um, their new home. I just sold a bunch of quail um, that were in this hutch right here um, and I'm going to use that um, to grow out our rabbits. Um, we have five Rex kits that need to be weaned. They were six weeks old yesterday. Um, they're doing great on hay and on pellets. Um, they're drinking out of their water bowl perfectly. Um, everybody's doing really well. So we have five. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and take three out today and leave two with mom just to kind of reduce the risk of mastitis and see how everyone does. Um, but I am going to sex them. I'm going to tag them, um, which I'm going to put like a mark in their ear because <laughs> All five of them look exactly the same. Um, we ended up, for some reason, we ended up with five seal rabbits. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, but this is where they're housed, right here. And then Daddy is over here, Falcon. Um, and he's chinchilla, and I really thought that I would end up with some um, chin babies, but that didn't happen. We ended up with five seal kits. So um, I didn't have a tattoo gun yet, so we're going to use um, a Sharpie and just, I guess, kind of reapply it every few days. People say it works well, so, you know, we'll see how it, how it does, but I'm going to um, sex them. I'm going to tag them for identification, and then I'm also going to weigh them. So we'll go over all of that, um, and you'll get to see the bunnies and, and all that jazz, and we'll see who um, we end up putting over here in this little grow out box. Um, most of them are sold. So I actually don't have to hold on to them for very long. Um, I'm only probably going to have them for another two weeks or so. Um, so they don't have to stay there very long. We are going to eventually um, build them, you know, a, a cage just for growing out. I am also kind of on the hunt for another doe. Um, so that may end up being Falcon's cage and then this three hole which is you know what they call each slot this three hole um, cage here may end up just being a, a doe palace so we'll see so let's go ahead and get a baby oh you see that little booty there's a little booty right here hi guys i'm gonna go first with you right here oh. now adjust the camera these guys have been handled, um, but they're still just timid. I mean, they're only five weeks old. They're used to being with mom all the time. So if you see them struggle a little bit, it's not because they're unfamiliar with me or anything like that, but you know, I'm still, I'm still a predator. I'm still way bigger than they are. So they just get a little nervous. So if you see them struggling any, any at all, I promise they're okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Like I said, this is seal. Um, this color, it's like a, almost brown but it's mostly gray their mom is sable daddy is chin and these guys as you can see they're this color through and through they're very sweet they're so soft these guys um a lot of times rex kits will end up not looking rex um, when they're young but these guys you can you can tell which just goes to show the quality of the breeders that we have <laughs> they've gotten so so big so fast i mean can you believe this rabbit is only six weeks old? It's huge. So let's see what it is. So to sex them, you're gonna hold them. <laughs> you're gonna hold them upside down and they're not gonna like it. They're gonna fret. So just go slow. And I like to just kind of hold the front, the top of them <laughs> just like this. <laughs> and then you just take your fingers like this and you just spread and I'll see if I can get this over, pointed over to you. So this, where to focus, this is a doe. Girl, and a lot of times the does will be a little bit more tame, I've noticed. So I'm gonna go ahead and tag her and then we're gonna stick her back. I wish I could see that baby back there. <laughs> Chillin. All right. So this one, I'm pretty sure is my buck. Well, I think I actually have three bucks, but I think this is one of them. And if you look at this guy, I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, but he actually has a bunch of tipping, which I thought he might be self-chin, which, um, or self-chinchilla, 
which <laughs> is basically black, but he just has so much white tipping that I'm not, sh I'm not sure. Um, I still think he might be seal, but I'm not positive. I don't know a ton about color genetics. They're super complicated in rabbits. Um, so I don't know that much yet. <laughs> um, there's a lot to it that like, if you ever Google like rabbit genotypes, rabbit color genotypes, oh my gosh, they're like this long. Like it, it's insane how many genes go into making up the, just their color. I mean, it, it's crazy. And maybe all animals are like that. And you know, this is the first time I've really gotten into um, genetics, but I'm in a couple of rabbit genetic groups and it is just crazy to me how how many colors there are different breeds have different colors different breeds have different showable colors um and it, it's wild <laughs> all right buddy so let's see i'm pretty sure this like i said i'm pretty sure this guy is my buck um one of i think i have three but let's double check he is huge stop he really doesn't want me to hold him upside down good job you're okay, you're okay. And they'll throw fur. I don't know if you can see the fur, yep, there's a piece. They'll throw fur when they get nervous. So yes, this guy is definitely a buck. See how much more that protrudes out? So I'm gonna tag him, he'll be number two. <laughs> Next. Oh my gosh. Y'all are so dramatic. So ah! You act like you've never been handled before. You're okay. Now, as most of y'all may know, we are raising these guys for meat. Um, rabbits are an excellent source of protein. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. It's very lean and they're so easy to clean. Um, they're easy to care for. You don't have to have a big space. We have six and a half acres, uh, but most of that is woods and we do have horses. So they take up a lot of that space. So we just don't have a lot of room to raise something like a cow or, you know, a whole bunch of chickens. Um, I don't like processing chickens all that much um, and keeping them. Um, we do great with our layers, but as far as like a, um, a meat chicken, I just don't find them to be super sustainable. Um, you have to order them every year, you know, unless you do like a heritage breed. Um, you have to order them every year and that's just not something I'm interested in. So when I found out about rabbits, at first I was like, oh my gosh, you know, there's no way that I could raise them, you know, and then dispatch them. Um, they're just so cute. But, you know, a lot of people were telling me, um, you know, once you get to the teenage years, you'll be ready to dispatch them. So far, it really, you know, this is our first litter. So we haven't processed any yet. Um, we haven't dispatched anyone. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know, it is, it is, it's growing on me. The thought's growing on me. Um, and the more I learned about it, you know, how easy they are to process, how clean they are when you do process them, um, how fast they grow, you know, Rex, we will process these guys at 16 weeks, um, because I do want to, to keep their pelts. Um, Rex have a fabulous fur. It's very soft and we have plans of making throws and pillows and comforters and that sort of thing. Um, so that none of the rabbit goes to waste. So that's, that's why we actually picked Rex was for their, um, for their pelts. There's other breeds that grow way faster and you can process way sooner, but, um, I liked, I liked the dual purpose, um, of the Rex and their personalities. They're just so sweet. Um, they can be pets as well. Um, so, you know, they're, they're just a gentle rabbit. Our next litter, I think I'll probably retain and hold on to, um, so that we can actually process them. Um, and put them in our in our freezer. Um, rabbit meat is so good for you. I'm rambling at this point. So anyways, let's sex this bunny first. You're okay. I know it's so hot today. Hey, you're not really being very cooperative. Okay, so this one is definitely a buck. You can see a little donut. So this is gonna be number three. And let me go get his numbers in his ear. Say hi. Hi, little buddy. And I'm gonna, um, I'll show you his number. Um, I'm just using a red Sharpie. You can clearly see the number three in his ears. Um, and if you look at the back of his ears, <laughs> back of his ears, um, it's a warm day. Rabbits use their ears to cool down. Um, so you can really see his veins are super red today, trying to move his blood through his body and cool him down. Okay. 
I think this is one of the does. Um, this is one of the ones that is like super friendly. Um, I would love for her to be a breeder. I'm pretty sure this is the doe. I haven't looked yet, um, but just going off of, based off of her personality, um, you can see how much calmer she is. The does are just, they're just a little bit friendlier. Um, now she could totally prove me wrong. This could be the other buck, the third buck, but I'm pretty sure that this is the doe. Um, they're super inquisitive, super friendly. Every time I open the cage, they come right up to the door. Um, so let's, let's see. Hi. I just say hi. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I was wrong. This is a buck. Oh, look at my chest. They keep getting me. Yeah, you can tell this is totally a buck. Totally proved me wrong. <laughs> Of course, you know, that's how it always is. Anytime you're like, oh yeah, I know this for sure is, is one thing. It's not, it ends up being another. So I'm gonna tag this, this is number four. All right, so there's number four. Last one. I'm pretty sure that this is the dough. <laughs> I think I have two doughs and three bucks. Of course, this is the way the cookie crumbles. The majority ends up being boys, um, but that's okay. No, I don't, I don't mind sending them out to breeder homes. Um, and kind of getting back, you know, the money that we put into them um, to buy our first trio. So let's let's check this one out. I was wrong. I have one doe. Look, it's a buck all day long. Dang it! Oh, look at that. One problem of handling rabbits is you're gonna get little nicks. Um, my breeders all have their nails cut but I haven't cut the babies yet and they're super sharp you know how like puppy nails are the sharpest things in the world well baby rabbit claws are even sharper um so I'm so disappointed uh, we have one doe and four bucks Ugh. but oh well go ahead and get these guys all weighed okay I've got my scale um this is just a kitchen scale um I've got my list of everyone here um i put that you know the one buck was super friendly it's nice to just have notes um i have more notes in the house um but it's nice to just have notes on everything um list in the house has um when we bred freya when um her nest box should have gone in the day that she pulled fur um i did give her a nest box but i also logged that um and then how many kids she had on what day um, and then, you know, if she did well, if she pulled enough fur, if she had them in the box, that sort of thing. Um, if you ever, you know, have a doe that, you know, gives birth on the wire or anything, you just want to kind of keep track of all of that stuff. Um, get to know your animals a little bit um, and know what signs to look for. Um, I want to say that Freya pulled fur on day 24, I think, and then kindled on day 32. Um, I have to look in my log. Um, I have a binder inside for uh, my goats, and then I also have a binder inside for the rabbits and my chickens and stuff. So just a good way to keep track of everything. So you can see, um, I've got my things zeroed out and I've just got a bowl that I can put them in to kind of weigh everyone. I'm going to do it in pounds. All right, we're gonna start with number one. So this is number one here. Um, there's her number. This is my only doe. So let's see. Just kind of set them in there real gentle. And hopefully they'll stay. So it looks like so two pounds and 4.8 ounces. All right, take her out. Boomer move. Nobody's weighing you. All right. So now number two, the big boy. Two pounds, 7.4 ounces. It's funny, like he's only two ounces bigger than the girl, but God, he feels so much heavier. All right. Now we've got number three, two pounds, 7.1 ounces. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Where are you going? Hello. Whoa, you're sliding. 
Well, you're sliding. Okay. We've got number four. No. Two pounds, 8.3 ounces. Big boy. <laughs> Are you leaving? Are you out of here? Uh, are you out of here? This is the one that I said was really friendly and he's just kind of a mess. <laughs> Sweet boy. All right, come on. And last but not least. Two pounds, 5.1 ounces. Now that we've got everybody weighed and tagged and all, um, and that was a little like traumatic for them, I'm gonna give everybody a little treat. I'm just gonna grab some kale out of the garden. So kale is super good for your rabbits. Um, it's good for all of your animals really, like my pigs love it. Um, I actually have some rabbit manure in here to help feed the kale and put some um, nitrogen and whatnot back into the soil, phosphorus and all that. Um, so let's grab some kale. So we just want to kind of give them a treat to calm them back down. Mommy's very excited. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and move um, move some of the rabbits over. I figured I would just um, kind of show y'all the way I'm gonna get their little house set up. Um, I'm putting in just a bowl of water right now. Um, that's what they're used to drinking out of and their cages that they've got now with mom. I'm just set this right there. I actually don't have a um, bowl for them, <laughs> a food bowl for them. So they're just getting um, one of our extra fiesta wear bowls. I like making sure that they do have some sort of hay um, in their in their hutches. Um, so I'm just gonna grab some hay and throw that throw that in there so they have something to nibble on. Rabbits are monogastric, unlike guinea pigs, so they don't need um, constant access to hay. Um, but I just like to have something in there for them to kind of nibble, entertain them, um, that sort of thing. That'll be in there. So it is all set up and ready. So we've got one and four. Um, that's the doe and then the really friendly buck. So I'm gonna put them in there first. Um, let them kind of hang out and see how they do. Um, I'll keep a really close eye on them for the next few days. So this is um, my old quail hutch. Um, it's a little small, obviously, for these guys for a long period of time, but just for a little bit, it, it will do. Um, this board I actually put in here um, just to give them some relief from the wire. So I'm interested to see how the rabbits do um, with that, if they pee all over it and destroy it. Um, so like I said, these guys are more than old enough to be weaned. Um, Mom's actually already kind of doing that herself. Um, but these guys will go to their new homes in two weeks. Um, in the state of Virginia, you can't sell rabbits before they're eight weeks old. Uh, you can wean sooner than that. I know people who do, um, but I like to leave them with mom for as, kind of as long as possible. But I like to wean them, um, make sure that they're doing okay, make sure, you know, that they're not going to have any sort of GI upset. Um, GI stasis is a um, condition that rabbits can get, um, and I just... I want them to have, you know, any issues um, when they go to their new home. So I want to make sure that they're in their own space off mom. Um, and then I also want to make sure that mom does well. I don't want her to end up any with, um, end up with any mastitis or, you know, um, getting nervous because her babies are gone, that sort of thing. So we want to do best by everyone. So we'll do a slow wean. Um, I'll probably take, um, I'll probably take 
probably three of them and leave two in there with mom um, and just see how she handles that. Um, maybe I'll do two and then um, do the other three another time. Um, but that's my plan. Um, thanks for, for coming along and, and helping me out. Um, I, oh, what I was going to say earlier that I totally lost my train of thought on. Um, what I was saying is you want to make sure that you handle them because, um, you know, we do raise these guys for meat um, and I want them to be handled as much as possible so that when it comes time for them to be processed, it's not a super traumatic experience. Um, I know that might sound like counterintuitive to some, like, well, why would you make it your friend if you're just going to end up, you know, killing it? Well, because we want to make it as positive as um, you know an experience as possible we don't want to go and grab a rabbit that's never been touched in its life and then try and carry it over to you know the processing station and dispatch it and it's totally freaking out uh, you know it's not a good experience for the rabbit it's not a good experience for us it make can make for bad meat um so you know we want to make sure that these guys are are handled and loved and calm around us, you know, know that we're, you know, here to care for them and love them and, you know, put care and love into them, um, that they'll, you know, put care and love into us and nourish our bodies, um, you know, when that time comes. But I think that that's it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment. I will keep you all posted. Keep an eye on our Facebook page, uh, Painted Creek Farm, and thanks so much. Bye.